Jordi Rodriguez. Today I'm going to be talking about cryptocurrencies. The reason I want to talk about cryptocurrencies is so that you have a perspicacious pers knowledge of crypto. In reality right now, if you look at the mainstream media and you look at what's going on in the news, there's a lot of negativity. Some people call it a scam. Some people call it a Ponzi scheme. How many of you have bought crypto in the last couple years? Okay, I'm sorry you guys lost money. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the reason I wanted to do this presentation is because there's just too much negativity out there and people really don't understand what cryptocurrencies do. To go into uh, Bitcoin, I'm going to go over the history of it. It first got put out in a white paper in 2008 by a person or entity called Satoshi Nakamoto. To this day, nobody knows that that's a person, a couple people, or maybe even a government. In 2009, Bitcoin became reality, and it has been evolving ever since. To understand what Bitcoin is, we got to understand what a currency is. What is a currency? A currency is anything that is used as a medium of exchange. It could be banknotes, it could be gold, silver, it could be rice, back in the days, salt. So what is a cryptocurrency? A cryptocurrency is a digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating independently from a central entity such as a government or a central bank. Here I listed some of the top uh, currencies. You have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Tron. Tron is the one that I'm, I'm dealing with. If any of you guys want more information on cryptocurrencies, the main website that most people go to is CoinMarketCap. CoinMarketCap.com shows you trends, graphs, price graphs, social media, <coughs> exposure, their websites, and a bunch of other information that you can do your own research. I'm also here not to convince you that blockchain is the real deal. I'm here to give you information and I want you on your, on your own to make that, determin that, term that determination. So what is the technology? Is it just digital money? When I first got into Bitcoin, I thought Bitcoin is a replacement of the dollar. If another 2008 crash happens where the stock market crashes, real estate crashes, well, you have something like gold. Gold could always be confiscated. Well, Bitcoin cannot because there's no central entity holding that Bitcoin. So I thought <coughs> it's, it's a good alternative to gold. The definition of a blockchain for uh, Wikipedia is a blockchain is a decentralized, distributed, and public digital ledger that is used to record transactions across many computers so that any involved record cannot be altered retroactively. What exactly does that mean? Well, blockchain, I like telling a newcomer to blockchain that it's similar to an Excel spreadsheet that is encrypted that any person in transaction has access to, so it's permissive and it resides on many servers in encrypted fashion. So you can hack one server and you still cannot get the information because it's all the little bits and pieces across many, many servers. Other things I know about blockchain are it's trustless, there's no central entity. Like I said, it's distributed, it's secure because you can only access through uh, cryptography and the, the storage of data is also spread out in encrypted fashion across different mediums and there's no intermediary. The main thing that I want you guys to get from this are sample use cases. How is it going to affect your life moving forward? The first cryptocurrency that got me into blockchain was Ripple. Ripple is a blockchain that does cross-border transactions between governments or between central banks in a matter of seconds. Right now, people use the SWIFT network when you do a bank wire and it takes anywhere from maybe four or five hours to maybe even days for the funds to go across. With RIP, in a matter of seconds, the transaction is settled. The next thing that came with blockchain is smart contract blockchains. That's just like Tron, the one that I deal with. There's Ethereum, Tron, EOS, those are the top three right now. And then there's Cardano, Neo, and there's a couple other ones. What they are, a good comparison of what they are, think of them as Android or iOS platforms where developers can build applications, decentralized applications on them. Other uh, distributed applications, these applications that developers make, I'm going to give you some use cases so you kind of understand them. I'm not going to go over all of these because a lot of them, 
I'm going to focus on net neutrality. Net neutrality is a crypto called Substratum, which what it wants to do is make a decentralized internet. So if you're in China and you don't have access to Facebook, you can use a Substratum platform to access Facebook. Another one, think of YouTube. YouTube, you have content creators, they provide their content, and what happens? You have to split the revenues with YouTube. So you make a dollar, YouTube gets 50%, you get 50%, and that's it. What if you create an ecosystem where a person, viewers for instance, can watch advertisements and you get paid for that? And the content creators put out their content and they get paid for that without a middleman. That's another example. Banking the unbanked. There's about 2 billion people in this world that do not have access to banks. Now with cryptocurrencies, in Venezuela, People are buying cryptocurrencies to be able to transact between one, one person and the other without the fear of the government taking it away from them. Supply chain, that's a huge one. Supply chain, what if you buy a, a Gucci bag? You don't know if it's authentic or not. But with blockchain technology, you can incorporate applications where you can track the actual product from production all the way down to the consumer. In diamonds, you could actually attach photographs to the blockchain so you can see the legitimacy, if it's certified, what type of cut it is, what type of clarity, etc. So are the big players getting involved? Or is this just crazy kids, you know, crazy college kids buying some fake money? Well, Goldman Sachs last year, they purchased Poloniex, which is a crypto exchange, for $400 million. <laughs> Next thing I would like to cover is an entity called BACT which is created by the creators of the New York Stock Exchange. BACT is going to be an exchange or custodianship platform for institutional investment. Fidelity this month is supposed to put out a, custodian, a custodianship solution. Custodianship basically means being able, to, being able to hold the cryptocurrency with certain insurance without losing it. JP Morgan CEO called it a scam last year. Well, this year, they just put out their own cryptocurrency. <laughs> the SEC says eventually Bitcoin will become an exchange-traded fund. That's, that's a really big deal.